February 6 marks the 67th anniversary of Queen Elizabeth II's accession to the throne. Her beloved father King George VI died in the early hours of that morning in 1952 from lung cancer, while the Queen and Prince Philip were in Kenya. Accession to the throne immediately followed, and a 25-year-old Elizabeth had her life changed forever. Brexit crisis, will Queen evacuate if Brexit turns ugly? Prince Charles, why Prince was an unhappy child at school revealed, but the day of her accession was a difficult one for the Queen, bearing the weight of her grief as well as the immense responsibility before her. And it was the Duke of Edinburgh who carried the heavy burden of being the one to break the sad news to his wife. The couple were in Kenya in place of the king, who was too ill to travel any longer, with Elizabeth beginning to step in to cover her father more and more. Three days after they arrived, the royal couple traveled to Treetops, a game-viewing lodge built in a tree overlooking an elephant water hole. Read more, Queen and Prince Philip's anniversary, 71 years in pictures they planned to spend the night of February 5 watching wildlife, enjoying a respite from their duties, before continuing the rest of their tour. In the morning, the princess happily promised I will come again as they drove off, unaware what was happening back home. In England, meanwhile, Hyde Park Corner was underway, the coded plan for arrangements surrounding the death of the king. At number 10, Winston Churchill was informed the king had died in his sleep at Sandringham, but it was four hours before word reached the princess. Queen Elizabeth II, how does the queen travel when she goes abroad? Will Princess Charlotte be bridesmaid at Lady Gabriella's wedding? Eventually, the news made its way to the lodge, where the couple were staying for the next leg of the trip. According to those who were with the prince when he found out, he is said to have looked like he was hit by a thunderbolt. Rallying swiftly, he took his wife for a walk in the garden where, at 2.45 p.m. on February 6, he told her her father was dead and she was now queen and head of the Commonwealth. She reacted with the same sense of duty that she has shown ever since, immediately discussing the practicalities of getting back to England and writing letters of apology for the cancellation of the tour. She was driven to a nearby airstrip to be flown home. Read more. What does the Queen eat for afternoon tea? The Queen was unmistakably under strain as she emerged from the car, but managed a subdued smile for the crowd. Passengers on the flight with her said she left her seat for a while and went to the bathroom. When she returned she was calm, but it was clear she'd been crying. Prince Philip stood by his wife through everything that was to come including her coronation on June 2, 1953, and all the duties of royal life's ups and downs. On their golden wedding anniversary in 1997, the Queen took the opportunity to pay public tribute to her husband. She said, he is someone who doesn't take easily to compliments but he has, quite simply, been my strength and stay all these years, and I, and his whole family, and this and many other countries, owe him a debt greater than he would ever claim, or we shall ever know.